Purchase and welcome to another edition of Midnight Nerd. So uh, tonight's Midnight Nerd is going to be a quick one. I just want to talk about how fucking disappointed I am with Sucker Punch. Never have I felt so cheated by a movie. Like cheated out of my money and just cheated in general. Like this is a horrible movie. They made it look awesome in the trailers of all the dragons and all the girls with machine guns, but the movie just sucks, and the ending is the worst ending I've ever seen in any movie ever. So I'm going to fucking spoil the movie for anybody who hasn't seen the movie, but I'd be doing you a favor by doing that because it's the fucking shittiest ending ever. So the main character, Baby Doll, her stepdad sets her up and puts her in a insane asylum dash whorehouse as to whether it's a sane asylum, as to whether or not it's a whorehouse, or what exactly the place is, they don't fucking tell you. And she's about to be lobotomized in three days. So she creates this fantasy world when she dances, when she dances sexy for all the men in the the Saint Asylum Dash Whorehouse. And when she does, she escapes in this world that is awesome and should probably be another movie because that was the only cool part. So all those dragons, machine guns, and World War II bombers that you see in the trailers, that's not technically real because she's only imagining it in her mind. Like, she hatches this plan to escape and this is how she's envisioning it while she's dancing distract all the guards while her her and her girls are doing all this shit to escape. And it is just fucking awful. All the girls die. All the girls get fucking killed. Their plan goes to shit. And at the end of the movie, Baby Doll basically decides that she doesn't matter even though she's the main character and we've been following her hot ass through the whole movie. And the bitchy girl, the one that you don't care about, is the only one that gets away. And Baby Doll just decides to go get that lobotomy. Get her fucking brains hacked out. So yeah, I've never felt so fucked over by a movie before. The ending was so terrible. You rooted for Baby Doll, you wanted her to escape, you wanted her stepdad to be punished for what he did, but at the end she just says, Hey, bitchy girl that nobody cares about, go run away and I'll stay here to get my fucking brains hacked! Why, Zack Snyder? Why? I just wish I could sit down with Zack Snyder and just say, Why? What made you, what in your mind possibly made you think that that ending was a good ending. Did you want the cheap people out of their money? Is that what you wanted? And if some big Hollywood fucker at the top sees this, he'll be like, whatever. It's just a dumb nerd on a camera talking on the internet. <laughs> well, guess what? Dumb nerds like me are the ones who make your fucking money. Technically, dumb nerds like me are your boss, and we employ you people, so you should listen to us. I'm not hating on Zack Schneider. I think he's a cool dude. He's made some good movies, but I just don't know what in his right mind, in any creative, intelligent person's right mind, would think, yeah, this is the movie, this is the fucking ending that we should go with. The ending where everything that we rooted for just doesn't fucking matter for. It was all for nothing. Everything we watched was for nothing. So please, take my word of advice. Do not go see Sucker Punch. If you're gonna see it, like, wait till it comes out on DVD, like, watch a friend's copy that he bought already, or, like, pay a dollar for it in Red Cube or whatever. Just don't pay $10 to see this movie. You I've never felt like I got ripped off so much.
It's so dim in this room, I had to get on the floor just to show you my comics. So the first one I'm going to show you is... Box. And I bought this because of the very intriguing cover. So this creepy looking dude, whatever he might be, is a peeping Tom watching two people have sex through a window. And he is jerking off, but I'm not going to show you that. Just when he thinks he's having a lot of fun, some guy with a giant apple head comes and ruins his fun. And a penis war ensues, and the couple inside the house is like, what the fuck, what is going on outside? And the cops come. And the giant applehead dude kills the cop. And throws his body into the people's house. I was very excited to find this. It's by Richard Corbin. It's called Ralph. I think that's how you pronounce it. So this story is basically about a princess who covets her dog deeply. And she gets captured by an invading army. And the only person who saw it happen is the dog, but the dog can't talk, so this sorcerer tries to cast a spell on the dog to make him talk. But he screws up the spell and the dog actually turns into this big buff wolf, werewolf type creature. He still can't talk, but he can sure as hell kick some ass. And he goes after his princess. This whole comic's pretty much a one-shot. It's just this story and that's it, but I love it and I love Richard Corbin and I want to get more of his stuff definitely. Like I bought this because Richard Corbin worked on it and it's issue number four so it's kind of in the middle of the series. It's about people being trapped in time. I want to get more of these. Here is a series of Betty Page comics I found, and I love Betty Page. And these white ones are actually just pin-up, pin-up pictures. But this is a full comic of stories. And that's another pin-up book. And I just love this book. This is not actually a comic, it's some essays and some stories and some pictures on Betty Page, and it's called Betty Being Bad. And I love what it says in the cover. In the 50s, they had Ozzie and Harriet, Davy Crockett, and Doris Day. We had Lenny Bruce, EC Comics, and Betty Page. Fucking no shit, dude. That's awesome. So I was really excited to find this. This is a fantasy magazine called Quadrant, and this is issue number six. I want to get the other issues, and this is a great mag. It's basically just like a heavy metal magazine with... Lots of well-drawn naked ladies doing cool stuff. Yeah, he draws some erotic women. This is called Radical Rock. And what's neat about this is this whole comic is a poem. It's written as a poem about these kids trying to put on a rock show but they can't do it because they're, they're going to get busted by the cops and it's just so poetically written and it really connects you to the time period that this comic is in, is based in yeah it's basically just like these hippies they're running around telling their brothers and sisters that their concert is going to get raided, but they decided to do it anyway. Now to read this one, I actually need some 3D glasses. I don't have any right now, but can't be too hard to get some. This is a 3D hippie comic. I love hippie comics, and I'll probably have good times reading this once I get some 3D glasses. And the last one I'm going to share with you is kind of my favorite one just because they can't really get the message whether it's just a total joke or was the person who wrote this trying to 
have an actual message to this, like an actual serious message. I just don't know. It's called Crack Busters, and you can see there are two dudes in like ninja type outfits fighting crackheads. The story opens with Alexander, and he's got it all. He's got a massive computer company that's on the rise, and he's rolling in it. Then his football playing buddy from high school comes to his office, not looking for a job, but offering him a proposition. He tells the story of how crack ruined his life. They go back to his place, and he unveils his plan to become the Crack Buster. Like that little logo there in the middle, that's so fucking funny. He wants his friend, his rich ass friend, to back him financially. And he says, hey, I studied martial arts, I played football, I can handle myself. And before you know it, the Crack Buster has taken everyone down. Every crackhead in town. His buddy decides he's tired of sitting in a boring office all day and decides to join him in his crusade. Hence, the crack busters are born. And no drug dealer in town is happy about the crack busters. Everybody wants them destroyed, including this weird ominous figure here who will not show himself. However, he does sell crack. I'd bet anybody would buy drugs from that guy. He was, looks so chill. So I'd like to thank everyone who watched my video. Uh, I'd like to thank those few people who are watching the Midnight Nerd videos and if I saw you at Comic-Con, it was cool meeting you. I love meeting people at Comic-Con. Comic-Con's awesome. So I don't know what I have in store for the future. I didn't make a video for a few weeks because I wanted to see how much hits the Midnight Nerd at Comic-Con video could get. And it was a lot more successful than any of my actual Midnight Nerd videos. So in the future I'm going to try to get to more cons and more events to see if I can bring more videos, more viewers to my channel. Yay, I'm going to be popular. Or not. <laughs>